Hello, it's time to take a look at channels. Now, I'd like to say a big thank you to every single person who subscribed. Unfortunately, only about 20% of my viewership is subscribed. So if you haven't already, go ahead and click that subscribe button. It will be greatly appreciated. Now, channels are a tool for Go routines to communicate amongst one another. So if we have one Go routine, it can send a value into a channel and then that value can be retrieved by our second Go routine. Now, these transactions are atomic. So if, say, for instance, I have that value inside the channel and I retrieve it and it goes into Go routine 2, it's no longer in the channel. So it's only going to be in one place. And this is going to be real important for what we're going to do later to make sure everything is synchronized. So we have our channel and it is type safe. So we're going to use the chan keyword for channel and we have to describe what type it can receive. So you could put an empty interface, so it could take about anything, but or so it could take anything, but we're just gonna use a string for this one. Now this is, we're declaring it, but we haven't actually initialized it yet. So let's go ahead and run this just to show what happens here. So an uninitialized channel is nil. Now down here, we're gonna use the make keyword and we're gonna go ahead and make a channel of, that, that can communicate the type string, can move the type string, and it has a buffer or a capacity of one. Now, as you can see here, we have a memory address. We know it exists somewhere in memory and to place something inside of our channel, all we have to do is use the arrow operator. So less than and then a dash, um, this is going to be a lot like the assignment operator where it's going to take the operands on the left and the right. It's going to take the one on the right and it's going to place it into the one on the left. So this arrow is going to be pointing to the left. So it's, and it's going to be placing the value to the left. So it's a, in some ways it's similar to this one, but not completely. Um, same thing when we're going to go ahead and pull that value back out of the channel, uh, where the arrow is going to point where that value is headed. So in this instance, we're taking the value E, the string E, we're putting it into my channel. And then later we're pulling that out and then we're just printing it off as we can see here. So just remember, uh, it's an arrow, it points to the left. So wherever you want to put it into, put it on the other side. Now channels are a little bit different than assignment where sometimes if you make one variable uh, equal to another, uh, well, the original variable on the right isn't going to lose its value, but in a channel, like in this situation, that value is going to be pulled out of the channel and then it's going to be placed here. Uh, one thing to be aware of, I have the buffer at one. So let's go ahead and let's just put this at no buffer whatsoever and see what happens. Okay. All go routines are asleep deadlock. So what exactly happened here? So, with a, with a channel, it will block, and, you know, when you're trying to put something into a channel, if it can't put, if there's no space to put anything in there, it's going to go ahead and block the code until it can. Now this could still technically run if we had this and this and in Go routines, because once the other Go routine was ready to grab that value, well, it'll transfer it over, but it can't sit in the channel. Go routine one has to be ready to hand it off and then you know, well, put it into the channel while go routine, you know, the other go routine has to be ready to receive it if there is no buffer. So let's go ahead and set, you know, the capacity on make to one, which is going to change our buffer to one and then save that, run it again. And we're just fine. So you can increase this buffer. This is how many different things it can have in that channel at a time. And if you don't set it, it's going to be set to zero. And of course, we can uh, look at the capacity of our channel and we can also look at the length. So here we're gonna go ahead and print the length. We're gonna go ahead and put a value in there. Now remember at this point, we put something into the channel, we put something out of the channel, so it should be zero. So we're gonna go ahead and check the length, put something in, check the length again. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and retrieve our value out of the channel and we're gonna check it one more time. Okay, so our capacity is one, which as we know from up here, and before we put anything into it, it's going to, the length is gonna be zero, 
we put E into our channel, it's now one, and then we go ahead and retrieve E out and we printed it out as you can see here, and now our length is zero. All right, here we're gonna go ahead and use the weight group again. So we're gonna go ahead and fire up uh, four different Go routines, print A, B, C, and D. Now, these are just going to print, are just gonna put one thing into our channel. Now, we were talking about blocking. If uh, something wants to receive, it can't, well, hold on here, let's go back down here. So. So those are each gonna go ahead and put one value into the channel, and then we're gonna go ahead and wait 10 seconds. And what we're gonna show here is that it's actually going to block because if these, if it's gonna wait 10 seconds and we can't pull a value out, being that our buffer is only one, only one of these go routines is gonna be able to put a value into that channel. That channel can only accept up to one. Um, we could even change that to zero if we wanted to, but let's go ahead and run and show, show what that does. Okay, as you can see, print A is done. So that was put into the channel and it printed this, but notice these other lines have not printed and there, there they finally go. So basically, uh, one of these was able to put a letter into the channel and then print A was able to print as we notice, it was about 10 seconds before print B or any of the others. So it was just by chance print A was there first. And we can see print A again has placed a value into the channel and it has finished, but these others go routines, these other three are not continued because there's no space inside of there until that 10 seconds runs out. And then it's like, hey, it can put those values in and then it can finally print like, hey, these go routines have finished. So just be aware of uh, the size of that buffer, because you could get blocked trying to put things in or pull things out. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and go on to our next example. We'll look at a more real world example. Okay. So in this example, um, this uh, code here is not terribly important. It's just going to go ahead and line everything up to where it looks like it's coming, printing out in a nice little table. Uh, the part we want to look at here is our slice of string. So with Go routines, we don't want to manually code all of our Go routines. Depending on how big our data set is, we want to be able to, you know, you know, fire up a whole bunch of Go routines or just a few. In this example, we're going to be looking at stock symbols, and I just grabbed uh, none of them in particular, just the top twenty. Uh, stock symbols, you know, we have Microsoft, Google, Tesla, and so on. And we want to go ahead and go through those and spin up a whole bunch of Go routines without actually having to uh, do it manually. So this first example, we're not using Go routines just to show how fast it runs. So uh, we're using time.now to get our time. Uh, we're just going to loop through all these and we're going to be using this package here, you know, finance go slash quote. So inside of this package, if you don't have it, uh, Everything else is the core package is this one. You'll have to use a go get if you don't already have it. We're just going to go get a quote on a symbol and then, you know, we're going to check for an error and then we're going to go ahead and print that out. So let's just go ahead and change to that. And let's run it. So this is going to loop through each, every single one of these. Now this one's using quote.get. If you dig into the package, there's actually a, a quote dot list, which is, is quicker, but we're just trying to show as an example, if we're retrieving every single one of these sequentially, and each one of them is waiting for one of them in front of it to finish, you know, this is going to take quite a bit longer. All right, there we go. So our tab writer is just going to go ahead and put this in something that, you know, remotely looks like um, a table. And it took us three seconds to retrieve all 20 of them. So and it's just getting the symbol, the name, which, which market it's on. I think that one's the Korean market, I don't know. And a price. So let's go ahead and take a look at using Go routines with loops. Oh, by the way, if you're using the tab writer, don't forget to make sure you flush at the end after you've printed everything that you're using with the 
tabs. Okay. Again, we have our slice of string of all of our symbols, and we're going to go ahead and spin up a Go routine to retrieve every single one of these. So to do this, uh, you know, we're still going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and make a channel so we can communicate. And the channel has to take a type, and inside that package that we're using, well, we're going to use the quote uh, data type, and we're just going to just set the uh, length to the number of symbols that we have. And of course, we're going to go ahead and set our timer so we can, at the end, print out how long it's been since uh, it started. So we're going to go ahead and use our for loop, and we're not interested in the index, we're just in interested in the value. So as we loop through symbols, we're going to go ahead and get back a symbol, and for each one of those, we're going to add to our weight group, and then we're going to go ahead and fire up a go routine for get quote, which is just a, a function we're using here and it's going to take uh it's going to go ahead and take a symbol and a channel so we're just going to run a quote dot get on our symbol it's going to go ahead and retrieve that information if there's an error it's going to let us know and then we're going to go ahead and take that piece of data that we got back and we're going to go ahead and put it in the channel and then once we're done we're going to go ahead and say wait group done so we can fill the wait group counter can be decremented and eventually that'll get to zero so that way we can you know finish out our code but anyway we're going to range through everything in symbols and we're going to spin up a go routine that's going to retrieve that information and then put it into the channel now for this one here we need to pull that information out of the channel as well so this one uh, we're just simply going to go ahead and loop through and how many times it's just, you know, length of how many symbols we have, how many things we have in our uh, slice of string here. So the great thing about this is that this slice of string could have many or a few things and this is still going to work. So however many different things you want to pull from, uh, it's just dynamically going to adjust accordingly. So we're going to take our channel, which is quotes, and we're going to go ahead and pull our, our value out and we're going to put it into Q and then we're just going to use you know fmt.fprint which is our format print and that writer that we used from our tab writer which is going to do all this neat uh, formatting for us well it's just going to use that you know in conjunction with our our tabs to go ahead and make that look real nice so so we're going to loop through get you know with each one of these go routines grab the information and then we're going to loop through and then print out all of our information Let's go ahead and run this and see how much quicker this is. So the last one was a little over three seconds. So oh, that was quite a bit. Oh, I'm sorry. I am still in channel loop one. So uh, we just ran the same one we ran. It was 2.6 sec uh, seconds. Uh, let's change to... Okay, this is the one that's using the uh, Go routines in our loop to make sure each one of these uh, get requests is on its own Go routine. Okay, so the other one was, you know, a little bit under three seconds to three seconds, and this one is quite a bit quicker. Let's go ahead and run it again. Oh, there we go. So it's about 400 milliseconds. Now, like I said, uh, this package this package actually has, you know, instead of using uh, quote.get, has a quote.list uh, function, which would be even quicker. But just to kind of show for demonstration's sake what this is doing, um, we're just using uh, we're just using the the get instead that we can show the difference of sequentially doing and then just you know, using our for loops to uh, go ahead and put each one on there. So when it's putting each one of these onto the channel, we don't have to worry. It's just in one location. And then when it gets pulled off that channel, you know, we don't have to, we know it's coming off that channel. So we're not going to pull it, you know, as we're looping through here, we're not going to pull that thing off twice. So anyway, 
I hope that was helpful. Uh, if you enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe. It really does help me out. Um, and I'll see you in the next one.